Hey, it's Everett with Ohio for Freedom. I'm a little self-conscious because uh, the human side of me feels silly. I've got my makeshift sackcloth. I got up this morning and burned some branches so I'd have some ashes. And But I'm doing that to make a statement. I'm just a nobody from Cincinnati. I'm not saying that for false self-deprecation or false humility, but sometimes nobodies get to speak to somebody so maybe that's happening now but I'm here in Nineveh Ohio I'm gonna step away from the camera this is Nineveh uh, last year it was a cornfield probably this year it'll be a bean field that's kinda how farmers do it here in Ohio but and maybe that says something because at one time there actually was a Nineveh Ohio and there isn't anymore and that's okay but doesn't it speak to us that things that we think will always be there aren't necessarily always there? And there are so many things about this eclipse that could be said, but what I really believe that the Lord is speaking to us is that starting tomorrow, that would be the 9th of April, there's a 40-day interval. And after that 40-day interval is Pentecost Sunday. And there's so many different things that cause us to know that this date on the calendar, this particular eclipse, are extremely important. But a couple of things that have stood out to me a few weeks ago, I was impressed when I woke up. And it was like all I heard was eclipse six months. And so I went back six months from this eclipse over America. And staring me right in the face was October 7th, the brutal attack by Hamas on Israel. And then I was led to look a little bit deeper and the interval in between that brutal attack and this wonderful eclipse is exactly 183 days. That's the length of the interval, 183 days. And if you add one plus eight plus three, that's 12. Well, maybe that's not a big deal, but wait a moment. This day is 4, 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. And 12 has always been a very significant number in the scripture. People refer to it as the number of God's government or the number of completion. I'll settle for it's an important Bible number. And so there's that interval. And if this had been a uh, any other year than a leap year, it would have been 182 days, but it was in God's providence 183 days. What are the odds of that? And so I believe that whatever God is saying to America, and he is speaking to America, Israel is a part of that, and our relationship with Israel is extremely important. But then I am here in Nineveh, Ohio, and we know that there are seven Ninevehs in the United States, but the eclipse that happened in 2017 that had seven Salems speaks to us about Jerusalem. And so if you look at Nineveh, and this eclipse also affected Jonah, Texas, you have to look at the book of Jonah and look at Jonah in Nineveh. And I would suggest to you that God is speaking to us. And if you compare Nineveh to America and Jonah to the church, you get some very interesting analogies. God had told Jonah to preach a really harsh message to Nineveh, and why? Well, we know why, because if you read the last chapter of the book of Jonah, you realize that from the very beginning, God wanted Nineveh to repent. He did not want to judge Nineveh. He did not want to destroy Nineveh. And so he commanded Jonah, which I believe is a type of the church, to preach a strong, even a harsh message so that they'd have the opportunity to experience the conviction of the Holy Spirit and repent. Jonah, a type of the church, ran from that responsibility, ran from that calling, and paid money to escape and flee the presence of the Lord, paid the passage to get on a ship and a, a horrible storm broke out. And the, the scripture tells us that the sailors, these were just average people, 
they they knew something was wrong they knew something was off and they all cried out to their god each to his own god now these weren't priests of baal or priests of moloch i believe that speaks to us that they just they they cried out to god as they understood god they didn't understand god very well they didn't know the true god but they had a fear of, the, of a creator that they didn't necessarily know, but they knew that something was up. And the captain of the ship, who was responsible for the lives of these sailors and for the well-being of the ship, was looking for their one paying passenger, and that was Jonah, a type of the church. And Jonah was asleep in the bottom of the ship. And the captain woke Jonah, a type of the church, up and said, why are you sleeping? And so, on the deck of the ship, there was a conversation between the average people, the sailors, and Jonah, and Jonah, and they cast lots, and the lot fell to Jonah, and Jonah had to say, this calamity is because of me. It'd be like the church saying, this calamity that you're experiencing is because of the church and what the church has failed to do, and the, 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 the sailors couldn't understand why. Why have you done this? And they did not want to throw Jonah overboard, but at, at the end, they had no choice. And they asked God's forgiveness, and they cast Jonah overboard. And Jonah, from the belly of the fish, in Jonah 2.7, it says basically, as I was near the throes of death, I remembered the Lord. And if Jonah is a type of the church, I would suggest to you, it's time the church remember the Lord. Remember your first love. Remember the promises of God. Remember the covenant that was made all the way back to 1607 to dedicate this nation and the purpose of this nation to God and to evangelizing the world. And then from the belly of the fish, Jonah said, I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. That's all he could offer. <laughs> Not much you can offer where he in the belly and the fish, but he offered the sacrifice of thanksgiving and he said, I'll pay my vows. And guess what? God was merciful to Jonah. I believe it's speaking to us that God wants to be merciful to a church that will repent and accept the calling to in love preach sometimes a hard to hear message especially in a culture like ours but the fish vomited jonah onto the dry land god forgave jonah and recommissioned him to go back and do the first works you know in america we like to refer to the the church and to the church in laodicea but if you look in revelation chapter 3 it was the church in sardis and Jesus is speaking through the Apostle John, and he said, I know that you have a reputation that you're alive, but you're basically dead. Yes, I'm paraphrasing to a bit, but it'll hold water. And he said, strengthen the things that remain and that, that are ready to die. And so is God speaking to the church in America that I want to give you another chance. I want you to return to your first love. I want you to remember my power, remember my promises, and teach people to walk in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And Jonah went to Nineveh. He never really got his attitude right, and that's but that's okay. He, that's God's business to deal with. But he preached that repentant, that repentance message, that that stern message, and Nineveh took hold of it. Now, it looks like there was an event very similar to what we just experienced, this eclipse, and that may have helped the people of Nineveh take the message of Jonah seriously, but the bottom line is they did, and from the least to the greatest, they put on sackcloth, and they put on ashes, and they cried out to God. The king even made a decree telling everybody to do that, and guess what? God saw their repentance and he was pleased, and he spared the city. But the message that Jonah had when he went to Nineveh, and it said it was a three days journey, it would take three days to walk from one end to the other, but his message was, it's gonna be overthrown, it was a message of repentance, but he said 40 days, 40 days. And so I wanna challenge you in this interval between now 
and Passover, this 40-day interval, interval, will you make a commitment right now that you will set aside some time every day and cry out to God to repent for yourself, for your life, but repent on behalf of your nation and repent on behalf of the church. Would you do that? Would you make a commitment? I'm, I'm not talking about legalistic and how much time, but would you set aside some time every day for the next 40 days and, and pray for the church in America, pray for America, and let God search your heart. And then after this 40-day period, what if we experienced a day of Pentecost like in Acts chapter 2? What if we experienced the power of God? What if we experienced Peter preached that first sermon and 3,000 people were saved and baptized and added to the ecclesia, added to the church? I'd like to ask you one more time, would you make a commitment? Would you just tell the Lord right now, God, I'm going to pray. I'm going to set aside some time. You can pray about your life aside from that. Pray about your family aside. But I'm talking about a portion of time for the next 40 days that you will cry out on behalf of the church and cry out on behalf of our nation. And would you, would you tell somebody and say, hey, I've made this commitment and hold me accountable. Invite them to join you. Our, just like Nineveh in Ohio does not exist anymore, please, please, please don't think that America is incapable of ceasing to exist. America is is hanging by a thread, y'all. It's hanging by a thread. And God loves America. And the last thing I'll say, if there's any Jonas out there that had a calling, had a mission, and you walked away from it, Jonah made a conscious decision, and he willfully chose. Maybe just life got in the way. Maybe just somehow you found yourself away from that purpose and that calling of God. Please turn to the Lord. Please come home. Please get back in the fight. I'm, I, 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 that's my story. But please come back. We, we're in the fight of our lives right now, and we need you in that fight. We, we need you to dust yourself off. We need you to spend the time on your knees and, 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 and ask God's forgiveness and then get back in the fight. So these 40 days, take time, pray, repent for the church in America, repent for the nation of America, and ask God to pour out the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and be merciful and good to our nation the way he was merciful to the city of Nineveh.